to pick one thing that you wish, whether it's like a, a personality trait, whether it's something on the court, is there one thing you wish, like Jalen, is there something about Jason's game or his personality that you wish you had and, and vice versa? Um, I like my curls. <laughs> uh, besides the, <laughs> the the curls, I guess. What was one thing? I think just the, I think JT does a good job of just staying calm. You know, no matter if it seemed like everybody could be, you know, yelling and screaming or passionate, and, and JT got that ability where it's just like he just, he just in his own vibe, you know what I mean? He's able to keep himself not too high or not too low, you know? And at times where, you know, it could be frustration or, you know, you want him to say something or speak out, <laughs> he just be, he don't say nothing. He just, <laughs> he just cool, you know what I mean? He let everything kind of work itself out. That's one thing that I think that I could, you know, just benefit from in a sense. Um, but at the same time, I, 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 I'm gonna need him to, to speak more and talk more and be more vocal if we don't correct the ship and get this thing off to the right start. I think um, there's many examples, but JB, uh, as many a times where he'll come to me right before the game or at least during shoot around. And like when he lock in on something or if he say like, yo, I'm not gonna let them, he's like, if he guards somebody, like, yo, I'm not gonna let him shoot going right. Or I'm like, whoever guard me in the first quarter, like I'm setting the tone and I'm getting to the basket every time. And like the ability to like think about something, say it, and then like go do it. Uh, you know, you just got that ability to like lock in on something and have that tunnel vision of, you know, you know, he know what he wanna do in his mind and, and, and going out there and doing it. it's like, a lot of people can say, like, yo, tonight I'm going to do this. But, you know, he don't always say it publicly, but he'll come tell me. And then I know, like, and when I see him do it, you know, that's, that's special. Um, and everybody doesn't have that ability to literally go do what they said they was going to do. Time now for Bringing the Heat, brought to you by Eastern Propane and Oil there in your neighborhood. A look at the Jays' production over the last two seasons. Tatum averaging almost 27 points per game, eight rebounds, and four assists. Meanwhile, Jalen Brown with 24 points per game, six rebounds, and three assists. Jason Tatum entering his sixth year as a Celtic while Jalen Brown entering his seventh year here in Boston. Pascal, how will Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown need to take ownership of this team this season if they want to get back to the NBA Finals? Stage? Yeah, I've, I've, I've said this for like the last four years that like Jason Tatum has to be a top five player and Jalen Brown has to be in the top ten. That's how you win championships, by having guys like that. So I, I feel like Last year, they could build on that. It's small things throughout the playoffs. I know they're both going to have really good regular seasons. I'm really excited about watching Jalen Brown play this year. I'm really excited about watching those guys lead their teams. Even Jalen Brown on the floor by himself without Tatum. But I think when you're looking at the NBA, they have to come in and say, we are the best winged or dynamic duo of, of in the NBA right now. And they got to go out there and prove it night after night. I'm really eager for everyone to see a little bit more of that interview because they talk a little bit about what matters to them now and it's all about winning. And I think it takes young superstars a little bit to get theirs and then get to a point where the focus shifts to just winning titles and being great together. And I think Jalen and Jason want to see this through. They took a lot of motivation from all the comments last year and everyone wanted to break them apart. We heard that some at the end of the Eastern Conference Finals. And I think the only thing that matters to them this year, and certainly like the accolades will come with it if they win, and they know that's their number one goal, and they understand, given the circumstances as well, that they need to go out there and be great. Mannix, what is that next step for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown this season? Well, look, I think Jalen Brown was you know, on his way to taking that next step in the second half of the season. You look at the raw numbers. After he got through November, December, the injury issues, the COVID issues, all that was going on with those Celtics lineups, his numbers went up. His, his field goal percentage, three-point percentage, they all went up after the All-Star break. He's coming into this season, as he said, in phenomenal shape. He's entering right now his physical prime. I think he's going to have 
a monster year for this team. And Jason Tatum, look, I spent some time this summer talking to Drew Hanlon, his personal trainer, and they targeted very specific things with Tatum's game, talking about getting to the free throw line more off drives, talking about, you know, protecting the ball more. You saw those turnovers uh, in the playoffs, getting to, said, getting to the free throw line, just being a little bit more aggressive when he gets uh, to the rim. I, I don't think it's going to take – much for Jason Tatum to take another big leap. He's right there on the cusp, and I think what they did this summer is going to help him get there. I ask you guys, do you think that by the end of the year, it'll be a 90 It's never 100% when it comes to people's opinion. Do you think 90% of the people will be like, those two guys are the best dynamic duo in the NBA? Could be. We'll see what the Clippers do. Possible. Yeah. I, it, I, I, it, I, it could I, be, it could be more the question of like, would you trade this duo for anybody? Nah, like, no, I'm, no, I'm no saying like you would. That. No, exactly. Yeah. That's what no, I'm saying. Like you would. Word. You would. No, you would. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't give up these two for any other duo. And like you wouldn't trade them for Kawhi Leonard, yeah. Paul George right now. They're too young and they're too, mm-hmm. you know, just about yeah. did their prime. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just feel like I feel like if 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 the Celtics are going to win a championship, mm-hmm. then those two guys got to be like hands down the best duo out there because you're going to go against Giannis and Chris Middleton. You're going to maybe replace face the Clippers. With Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, like you have to be on the court. You watch. You're like, nah. I'm stamping those two guys better than any other duo out there. And if they do that, I think the Celtics really will be the favorite to win the championship, and probably will hang banner at number 18. 